Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today let's review Doctor Who Season 3. Of course, the 65 to 66 season and the final season, the final full season of William Hartnell as the first Doctor. I like Season 3, um, most of it anyway. Uh, now, I haven't seen um, a couple of the stories from it, at least The Savages. I know I haven't seen The Savages, and I haven't seen The Massacre, though I've read the novelization, and I feel like I'm forgetting one in there, but we'll get to it as we go through them. Now, Season 3 <clears throat> is the first season we're talking about in this series that's heavily affected by missing episodes. Season 1 and Season 2, while being affected, aren't affected to a large degree, really outside of Marco Polo in Season 1, whereas Season 3 is heavily affected by missing episodes. Now, Season 3 has 45 episodes, which I believe is the longest season Doctor Who has ever done to date, with 45 episodes, making up 10 stories. Now, only three of those stories are complete because only 17 episodes exist out of the 45. So just over a third of the episodes exist. And we do have three complete stories being the Ark, the Gunfighters, and the War Machines. And four stories being completely missing. With, of course, being the Myth Makers, Mission to the Unknown, the Massacre, and the Savages. <clears throat> and then the other stories being partly missing. <coughs> so let's talk about the stories in order, or at least the order I have them written down, and that might not actually be the proper order, I think. Um, Galaxy 4. Now, I just rewatched Galaxy 4 recently, and I did watch the Telesnap reconstruction with the surviving footage that's on the still book. That's actually my favorite way <coughs> to watch Galaxy 4. I tend to love the surviving footage, and I tend to actually really like the leak reconstruction. The uh, reconstruction for Galaxy 4 might actually be my favorite reconstruction uh, that's been done this far. The animation's fine, too. The black and white animation and the color animations are good. I have nitpicks with them, which I talked about in that review. But uh, overall, they're fine. I do like the color version of it especially, because if I want to watch it in black and white, I'll just watch it with the surviving footage and the recon. But I do <clears throat> enjoy the story a lot. I love the kid's message it gives of not judging a book by its cover for multiple reasons, so if you know at least one of those reasons, I've talked about that in videos. Uh, but I, while being a bit simplistic, <clears throat> I still think it's a good lesson for kids to learn. And it was very much a kid's show at the time this season was airing. And I like the set design a lot too. It does a really good job of making you feel off world, especially with the, um, the Reels encampment in the original production version of that, I really enjoyed. So I like Galaxy 4. It's a nice opener to the season. It's a really good season opener, in my opinion. And then we have the Myth Makers. Now, I'm not as keen on the Myth Makers. Part of that could be because it is completely missing, and the recon for it is a little hard to get through. It's, it's hard to get through. And then it has that incidental music. Oh. That incidental music, some of the incidental music is just awful. Oh. And it, it played, like, right at the beginning of the recon, so immediately I was like, oh, dear. <laughs> uh, it got a little better, but it, it's, it's, oof. I'm, I'm, I think I know why they haven't animated this one yet, besides the fact historicals are just hard to do in general. It's just, it's not an interesting story. Um, I wish Vicky had got a better send-off. Marine wishes Vicky had gotten a better send-off. Uh, it has a couple things I like about it. Like, I do kind of like the guy playing, um, Odysseus in it, just from what I can hear on the recon. <clears throat> I like him in it. The guy playing the king is pretty good, too, the king of Troy. So it has a couple things I like in it. And the novelization was a nice enough read. But yeah, not a story that really gripped me, to be honest. Mission to the Unknown, I like. I have seen the remake the college university did, and I've seen Ian Levine's animation of it. And I enjoy both. I think it's a good setup to Master Plan, but it stands well just as its own one-off episode. I love the tension. I love the way the sets looked in the animation and the rec the recreation. I love the idea of the Varga plants. Just the idea of them is such a cool idea. I'd love to see them come back in, in Doctor Who, in Modern Who, because there's they're such a body horror element to them, and Doctor Who does not do body horror often enough that I would love to see that done 
with a Varga plant and just seeing. I would love to really explore someone transforming into that plant and everything that's happening to them mentally. I really enjoyed the um, the novelization of it a lot, actually. I thought the novelization of it was a really, really good read. Um, so I like it a lot. It's a good one episode as a prelude into um, Dalek's Master Plan. Matter of fact, I think it airs actually... actually after, it airs after Galaxy 4, and then we get Myth Makers in between them. And then we run into Dalek's Master Plan. Now, I watched Dalek's Master Plan <clears throat> for the first time not long ago, and I think I've read the first half. The first half of the story. Book one. I don't think I read book two. Did I read book two and forget about it? My, is my memory that bad? I think I've only read book one, which I like. Did I read book two? I don't remember. That's bad. But the... Uh, the story I liked, it's too long, though, at 12 parts, especially with nine of those parts being recons. First of all, the Feast of Stephen, oh, you can just take that out. Just, Feast of Stephen, just, it's, it was a fun thing to see. I don't ever have to watch it again. Uh, but it's, it's too long. It's nice. It's, it's, again, a lot like The Chase, a more serious version of The Chase. I see why people make those comparisons. I think Nicholas Courtney is great as Brett. And when Brett died at the end of episode four, I was like, I think it was episode four right in there. I was like, oh, I was not expecting that. So I was kind of, and I wasn't expecting Sarah to kill him either. I was like, oh. and then, you know, I'd always heard Sarah Keenan was considered a companion. I could never figure out why when she's only in the one story, but seeing her travel with them from like episode five on, I see why. Cause she does a lot in that time. She's with them. And I do like her as a character. Jean Marsh is a great actress. So I love how she's playing the character. Jane Marsh is always great when she shows up in Doctor Who, always. So I loved um, how she played Sarah here. And then just Sarah's death, even though we, we don't have the existing footage, the pictures of it, <clears throat> and just the way it looks and sounds. What a way to go. And the fact that it was so avoidable where if she just hadn't stayed behind to help the Doctor and it went with Steven, that's the tragic thing about it. <coughs> I have a little nitpicks like, what happened to the Varga plants? Why does the forest suddenly seem safe to run through when you used to have to be careful even just walking by? I mean, do they all get killed with the fire? And, and it just plods along too long, especially when three-fourths of it you're having to plod through with the recons. Really hurts it for me. But it's great to have the monk back, too. I love Peter Buttersworth, and I'm glad one of the existing episodes, episode 10, has the monk in it. I do like that a lot. And then we move on to what? The Massacre? <clears throat> now, I haven't seen The Massacre, but I've read the novelization. Though I hear the novelization and the TV version are actually quite different. I think the novelization is closer to the original script. I liked the novelization a lot. I did. I thought it was really neat, especially how it ties in with actual history. <clears throat> and then realizing how many of the uh, actual guest characters in it probably died not so nice deaths almost immediately after the conclusion of the story. That's that's sad. And, but it's very much in line with the first Doctor's You Can't Change History, Not One Line. You know, you just, we, they, they're very much in a bad point in history and just have to get out of it with their lives. Um, <clears throat> but I, I enjoyed it well enough. I thought, I thought it, the characters were cool. I enjoyed the read-through. Uh, I don't know if I could watch the recon especially since I know telesnaps don't exist of this one. It's really just the production stills. I, I don't know. I think the recon would be a hard watch. I'd re really wish they'd just animate this one, but I have a feeling it would be hard to animate being a historical. But one of these days, I'll get around to the recon of it. But I liked the novelization. It was a good read. Um, Again, I get a little mixed up on orders here. We have the Ark. I liked the Ark. The Ark was actually the very first first Doctor story I ever owned. I was in a store, decided I wanted a first Doctor story, liked the way the DVD looked, bought it, took it home, watched it. I enjoy it. <clears throat> I like the the little Meltroids or whatever they're called. I forget. I like their design with the little one eyeball. I actually like that design a lot. I love the twist of the story. I love how the twist comes halfway through the story of how you feel sorry for these people. And then from part three on, you do not feel sorry for these people. The cliffhanger to episode two is one of the best cliffhangers in Doctor Who. I absolutely love it and the implications behind it. 
I like the, I like that it explores the concept of introducing alien germs or human germs into an alien society where they have no immune system from it with ba with Dodo basically almost killing everyone because she has a cold. I love that. I would like to see Doctor Who explore that more too. The idea of <clears throat> something that's not a big deal for us, but we go into space and introduce it somewhere where, you know, people aren't, they don't have any immunity to it and it causes some kind of disaster. That's a fascinating concept and it's nice to see that explored here. I really enjoy the arc. Um, I need to give it a rewatch sometime. I think I've only watched it twice, but I really enjoy it. And then we also have the Celestial Toy Maker, which I enjoy. I really liked the animation for the Toy Maker. That style of animation might not fit any other missing story, but it fits for the Toy Maker, for the fantasy surreal nature of the Celestial Toy Maker as a story. The animation fits very well. I like the liberties taken with it. This is a very fantasy story. I think the original production, judging by uh, the, the surviving episode, the, they just could not do all of the things that their imagination would have liked to have done. Uh, and they can do that with the animation, and I enjoy that. Now, I still love the surviving episode four, and there are a couple choices in the animation, especially in part four, that I was like, why are they doing that? Which I mentioned in my review of it. But, I mean, you have Michael Goff. <clears throat> and Michael Goff just lends so much to this as the toy maker, especially in his voice. That really comes across in the animation. His voice is so good that even though I'm not seeing Michael Goff, I'm seeing an animation of Michael Goff. <clears throat> his voice is carrying so much of this story, and I love that. William Hartnell's doing a good job with what we get of him as the Doctor, especially in Episode 4 in the animation and the surviving episode. And then I feel like Dodo and Steven are, um, it's nice that they get some time to shine, even though Dodo is a complete idiot at times. Dodo really is a Dodo sometimes. She's very aptly named Dodo, because she is a bit of a Dodo, as in not very bright sometimes. Uh, and I can understand Stephen's exasperation with her at times, especially when Cyril is acting like he hurt his leg. She's like, no, I'm gonna help him. And he's like, Dodo! I'm sitting here going, Dodo! Um, but overall, I really enjoy it, and the animation has helped me appreciate it more. The reconstruction is a very hard go for me. I love the surviving episode four, but the reconstruction is a hard go. The animation is definitely my preferred way of watching it. We have the gunfighters. Not a big fan of the gunfighters. Most of you know this. <clears throat> now, there are some things I like about the gunfighters. The guy playing Doc Holliday, I really like. He's really good in this. I really, really like him. Uh, the guy playing Johnny Ringo, I seem to recall liking. Dodo actually gets some stuff to do in this, which I also enjoy. Steven is treated horribly. Steven is written terribly in this episode. Um, the, and, of course, the ballad of the OK Corral, or whatever I call it, the Last Chance Saloon, whatever it's called. What I call the ballad of Johnny Ringo is... You guys know how that I am about that because it plays, a, I think, on average about every four seconds. At least it seems like that. I've only watched it the one time because I haven't ever been able to go back and watch it again. <clears throat> I don't think I own it. I actually thought I owned The Gunfighters, but if I do, I can't find my copy of it. I don't think I owned it. I think I just watched it on Daily Motion. I'm not 100% certain. I need to go back and check like an old video where I went through the whole collection. I, I don't think I own it. I guess I need to get it at some point. Mm, I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> I didn't care for the gunfighters. I just, oof. It's, it's, it's a crime that so much of season three is missing, but we have all of the gunfighters. That's just cruel. <laughs> yeah, that's part of what holds the season down there for me. We have the savages, which I know nothing about other than Stephen leaving. I am purposely avoiding... <clears throat> anything on the savages because I don't want to know. <clears throat> I know Stephen leaves <clears throat> and I know the doctor's not happy about it. Of course, it's completely missing and I'm holding off on it because it does sound like it's one of the ones that's easier to animate. I remember back when Galaxy 4 was announced, everybody figured the next one would be the savages, the next Hartnell. Back when we, back when we got so uh, caught up in our own hubris, I guess, that um, we were like, we're going to get three a year. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and 
I remember making a list for like three different animations per year, two 2D and one 1D. Oh man, I feel so silly looking back. But um, everyone kept saying the next one was probably gonna be The Savages. So I assumed The Savages would be one of the easier ones to do and that we'll get it in 2D animation eventually. So I'm holding off for that. But um, I don't know if the fandom thinks it's good or not. Again, I try to avoid any, any kind of thing about The Savages. Then we have The War Machines, which I like. I enjoy The War Machines. I did rewatch it recently and review it recently. I enjoy it. It's a great introduction to Ben and Polly. It's a terrible farewell for Dodo. Terrible. One of the worst companion departures. But it's a great introduction to Ben and Polly. Um, the first Doctor, William Hartnell, is phenomenal in this. Absolutely phenomenal. This could be maybe the last story where he truly shines. Although I think he's great in the first two episodes of Tenth Planet. Um, but he just shines in this. I like a lot of the guest cast in this for the most part. Uh, the, I, it's hard for me to take the robot seriously. The actual war machines do look a little silly, but I mean, something like that could kill you. I mean, the thing doesn't look like it has a weakness. I'd hate to end up in a dark alley against one because you couldn't really fight it. You know, hit it in its weak spot. It's a giant machine. It doesn't have a weak spot. <laughs> So, I mean, it, it could easily be effective. I just, I don't know, for some reason, I just they just look a little, I can't take them too seriously. Um, but I enjoy it. it. It's really nice. It's got some good location work. It's got some good set designs. It's got some good cliffhangers as well. So, yeah, overall, I like season three. Really, the only stories holding it back for me are the gunfighters and the myth makers, I would say. I tend to like everything else. I enjoy Galaxy 4. I like Mission to the Unknown. <clears throat> Dalek's Master Plan. It's kind of in the middle for me because it does draw on and so much of it's missing. <clears throat> I like the Toy Maker mostly due to the animation. Uh, the Massacre is a good read. I need to watch the episodes. The Savages is a mystery block. And then I like the War Machine. So <clears throat> a good part of the season I do like. Um, I don't think it's as good as season two, but again, that, that could be affected by missing episodes. So much of the episodes are missing in this that it's really hard to treat it fairly. Um, but of course we have Vicky leave early on. We have Dodo come and then leave toward the end. We have her for a bit. We have Steven most of the season leaving right in the penultimate story. And then Ben and Polly getting introduced at the end. So we do have the companions completely switch over. I think it's a strong season. I mean, the 60s seasons are all good. I don't think 60s Doctor Who had a bad season. Like, I don't even... Ooh. I think Doctor Who probably didn't have a bad season. I don't even know what the first season I would call a bad season in Doctor Who is. I don't Because I don't think Tom had any bad... I think if I was trying to be objective, if I had to say it had any kind of... Even just a middling season... It wouldn't even be into the Williams era. And I love all of the Tom Baker seasons. I do. I love all seven of them. But I think if I was trying to be completely objective, um, maybe the Williams era, maybe 15 and half of 15 is at least good. And I like season 16, Power of Kroll aside. And I like season 17. I can understand if people didn't think it was that good, but I like 17. So I think classic Doctor Who's pretty solid for the most part. Um, but the... I feel like all of the 60s seasons are very good. Like, I don't I don't even think there's any middling seasons in it. And season three is also part of that. While not being as good as season two, I'm not quite sure how I would rank it with season one. Again, the missing episodes make that really hard to do a comparison between season one and season three. I definitely like the fact season three, they seem to go for it at times. I think Galaxy 4 is a great lesson to children. Mission of the Unknown is a nice prelude into Dalek's master plan. The Myth Makers, you're going back into the Trojan War with you know, delving in history. Dalek's master plan really goes for it being this 12-part epic. And then you jump straight into the massacre, which is, yeah, it can be sensitive to younger viewers, especially letting on, hey, all these people we talked to, they just got slaughtered. Uh, and then you jump back into the future with the Ark. Again, you kind of go back to that darting back and forth between historicals and future stories. Um, and then we get the nice fantasy trippy thing of the toy maker before jumping back in time to the OK Corral, basically the shoot out the OK Corral, what's going on there to whatever's going on in the savages, something in the future, I, I'm guessing it to jumping into contemporary earth, something we don't really do a lot 
in the Hartnell era, going to contemporary times, um, for the War Machines, which I think is a good way to end the season. It's actually a really good uh, way to end the season. And, of course, good performances throughout. William Hartnell really shines this season pretty well, I think, like he tends to usually do. So, yeah, I enjoy season three. I think it's really good. I'm not sure if I prefer it over season one or not. Season two is my favorite Hartnell season, but I'm not sure between three and one. I'm going to have to think on that, actually, uh, and decide which one I like better. That's a tough call, I actually think. I, part of me thinks season three might be better from a narrative standpoint, but missing episodes hurt it because I can watch almost all of season one, basically all of season one except Marco Polo, thanks to animations for Reign of Terror. So that's, that's really hard. That's really hard. So I want to know what you think of season three of classic Doctor Who, William Hartnell's final full season as the Doctor. Comment down below and let me know. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me on that. That helps me out, helps me keep bills paid, and it's very much appreciated. I want to give a shout out to a couple of my top tier patrons, Colin Coney and Stephen Crane. I appreciate their support, as I do the support of all of my patrons. It's very much appreciated. I also have a P.O. Box. If there's anything you'd like to send me to look at and review, I have a link to my Amazon wish list down there. A link to my Amazon UK wish list is also down there with several things that it's easier to order off of that one than it is the American one, if you want to check that out. <clears throat> or if you would, just click the like button and the subscribe button. That helps me out and is also very much appreciated. Most importantly, thank you for watching.